brothers, my brothers, my brothers. Come on now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What is on my heart today? What are we going to talk about today? So the scripture, I'm praying, mind my own business, the Holy Spirit uh, shows up and shows out and says, remember when Job in the Bible says, the thing I fear the most has come upon me. And so he's like, oh, you know, you need to look at that scripture, right? And so let's look at that scripture in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for what, who you are, for whose we are. And we give you our praise and honor for you are worthy of praise. Come on now. Thank you, Jesus. So the scripture says that uh, what I always feared has happened to me. This is the New Living Translation. Um, What I dreaded has come true. I have no peace, no quietness, have no rest, only trouble comes. My brothers, my brothers, my brothers. Come on now. Now Job is the guy that God spoke about so highly. Job is the guy that showed up and showed out when the enemy tried to get him in all three of those tiers. When he tried to get him in his possessions, his finances, when he tried to get him with his uh, children, and when he tried to get him with his health and his appearance, Job showed up and showed out for God. He never deterred from the fact of God is who God is and that God's will be done and that he never acted foolish is what the word says. God, Job never acted foolish even after his wife came to him and said, curse God and die. Now we know that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood and so that the enemy was trying to get Job to curse God and die because he could not kill him. Um, but if he could convince him that uh, God was against him, then he, maybe he could act foolishly. But Job did not. Even in all kinds of the closest of closest, they lost, she just lost 10 children. And still he would, he held his ground. What did Job fear? What was Job so afraid of? The thing I feared the most has come from me. And we know that when we read the scripture and we talked about Job got up in early in the morning and prayed continually for his children because he feared that uh, maybe they were doing something uh, against God, right? And so he covered them, right? Um, we are called to do the same thing. Get up in the morning and pray for our children um, to make sure, pray for our wives, uh, for our loved ones um, before they uh, leave their house. Early in the morning, it is our responsibility to be men in spiritual position in that way. And so Job was doing that. But what if Job was doing that from also a, a fear? Was he fearful that something would happen in these 10 children that he had, he would lose them? Uh, was Job concerned possibly that uh, all that God had blessed him with, that somehow he would mess that up and God would take it away from him? Uh, was Job even in his integrity and his honor and knowing God and hearing about God, uh, was it possible that in the midst of all of that, that there was some false evidence appearing real? What do we have in our lives? What do we have in our lives that uh, we are uh, fearing that um, will come to pass? What do we have in our lives that we are hidden back, that hidden, that down low, that we may not be dealing with, that concerns whether or not we trust in God? Now, we know the story of Job, and I love the story because I, I truly believe it's a love story. What happened to Job? Job, the thing that he feared the most, came upon him he lost everything but he did not act foolishly he did not blame his God foolishly and what happened at the end of the story at the end of the story God restored Job twofold twofold right so he was already the richest man in the east but then he now is the double the richest man in the east right i mean if there's more than the east i guess the east was the biggest deal at the time and so he was the richest man in the east and so now god doubled him up so he's probably richest man everywhere east west north and south right so the thing that he had feared the most coming upon him it came but his god still showed up the enemy wishes you to fear Losing the blessing that you have, losing the joy that you have. Your marriage is going right, your wife likes you, uh, your kids are acting right, um, you're blessed, and you got a great job, um, you just got a promotion, or you just started your business, and you got a great contract. And so, but you're walking around, maybe in the back of your head, 
thinking, man, what if I lose all this? What if I die? What if, um, you know, somebody turns against me, somebody deceives me? The thing that he feared the most had come upon him. This is Job, the guy that um, God spoke so highly of, his concern and running around in his blessing, in being the biggest deal around whether or not he would be able to maintain what he had. <clears throat> whether or not the relationship he had with God was secure, that God saw his heart, that God knew he loved him, and that God knew that he uh, would do whatever he had to do to make sure that God always knew that he was first, right? And so what happens, right? At the end of this story, in 42, Job, chapter 42, Job says, I had heard about you, but now I see you. I truly believe in my heart that God's trying to say to a man out there that um, you're doing the right things. You're, you're going to prayer on Saturday mornings. You're, you're doing it on the prayer line. You're, you're praying in the morning for your family. You're carrying your flesh under control. Um, you're in, going to church on Sunday. You're taking the family to church on Sunday. You're in a, a man in spiritual position. And that you are still may have a concern whether or not, whether or not God loves you, whether or not um, you are doing everything that you're supposed to do. Are you pleasing God? And so I would ask you to look at the story of Job and see that um, God took the fear that Job had, flipped it around, and showed up and showed out to let Job know that um, he can trust his God. God put in my heart, the Holy Spirit put in my heart, that us as men, we have things in our lives that we are keeping close to us because we are afraid that God Jesus may not love us. We know the stories, we know the scripture. For God so loved the world, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And there was another scripture that uh, the Holy Spirit had put on my heart. And it was John 15, 13. And so let's go there for a second, just so we can all be on the same page. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. John chapter 15, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are. We thank you for what you do. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for being our best friend, for being on our side. And in this scripture, as we find this thing here, in the name of Jesus, John chapter 15, John 15, 13 to 17, in the name of Jesus. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the Father told me. I love that scripture. Because uh, we know the story about God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But here, this is red letter. Jesus is telling us that there's no greater love than to lay down your life for your friends, right? And then he calls us friends, right? Calls us brothers, right? And so, if you are concerned whether or not you can trust God, you're, bringing, you're holding things natural to you that really you have your faith in. Like, you, you have faith in the fact you're having your wife close to you, your partners, your buddies, your pals, and you do everything together um, because then you know that um, you have some faith that you're loved. Are you being hindered from trusting in the fact that Jesus loves you? I asked a question about whether or not how you feel about your relationship with Jesus Christ. Because the Word of God says, Jesus said, I never knew you. Get away from me. Are we living our lives so afraid that we may find out that Jesus Christ or God doesn't love us according to the lie of the enemy? The enemy wants us to believe that we are not loved. So look at around our lives. In the natural, we have all these things. Does my wife love me? My kids love me? You know, my friends love me? My mama love me? Okay? We're looking around our lives. Look and look inside. Search your life. Search your heart. Search your mind. Search your soul. Are you holding things in the natural that you're using as a representation of things that you can touch and know 
as your faith in God that he loves you. No greater love. No greater love than that who, who that lays down his life for you. Search your heart. Are you living in fear subconsciously that God uh, Jesus doesn't really love you and that um, you may be blessed now but something's going to come and take that away from you? Are you living in fear uh, that um, the things of the past, the people, the things that people did to you in the past, that you have got to keep others close to you so that you don't get snuck up on again? Are you living in fear that you are, uh, have got imposter syndrome, that they're going to find out that you may not be as holy as you say you are? Are you living in fear? False evidence appearing real. The lies of the enemy. The thing I feared the most has come upon me. What is that thing that we have inside of us that we fear the most? I'm asking you to take a look at that because the enemy wishes to sift you like wheat. And Jesus Christ is telling you that I love you. I died for you. No greater love. Search your heart. We're about to go into warfare. We're about to go into a revival that's going to be off the chain, uncontrollable. We're just going to be swept up. That is not the time where we try to find out whether you love Jesus or not. That's not the time where you want to find out what your faith is like. That's not the time you want to find out whether Jesus loves you or not. That's not, that's not the time where you want to try to figure all that out. You need to figure that out now. If you've got anything in your life, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you that you are using as a crutch so that you don't have to trust in the love of Jesus Christ. I'm asking you right now to lay it down in the name of Jesus. I'm going to pray with you. For I'm praying with myself and for everybody, all my brothers, right? Because we're going to war, and my heart is to prepare us for war, and I can only do what the Holy Spirit guides me to do. So Holy Spirit, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for reminding us, for having us take a look inside of ourselves to figure out, is there anything between us and you? Do we truly believe that you love us? We know that you died for us. We'll probably be convinced of that. We know that you were, uh, were killed, you were buried, and you resurrected, that you sit at the right hand Father. We know that. But the thing that all the most that we all fear is, are we loved? Are we loved? And then we have to say, you know what? Jesus, the enemy is trying to convince us that we're not loved by you. So, Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to remind us to break any lying demonic spirit that would tell us that you don't love us, that to show us consistently your word, that tells us not only that you are you for us, not only that how you blessed us, but that you will never leave us or forsake us. And then you've given us the Holy Spirit, that when we receive Jesus, we're going to save, that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit forever. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, touch our hearts. For every man on this line right now, for every man that's seeing this, for every man that's hearing this, I'm asking in the name of Jesus that whatever the fear they have, that would be a crutch, anything that they have that's a crutch between them trusting truly you are God. Are their wives in the way? Are their kids in the way? Is their finances in the way? Is their job in the way? Is there anything in the way that is uh, using you as a crutch in the name of Jesus to stop them from trusting that you love them, trusting that you care about them, trusting that you got their back, that they can trust you, and that you have never failed? My brothers, my brothers, my brothers, wartime is coming with a revival in the midst of it that is going to shake you to your very core. Now is the time where we face our fears. Now is the time where we come against anything that will seek to cause us to not know that we know that we know that our God is for us, that we are not alone. People will let us down. Are you living a life where you are trying to control a situation so you don't get got again like you got before? Are you living a life where you're trying to hold people close to you so that you know that you can see it coming this time so they're not going to get you deceived, they're not going to sne sneak up on you and, and break your heart? And so therefore you're not able to come and be released and be able to trust in a God that is more than able. Trust in Jesus Christ who will never fail you, who has always got your back, who died for you. Search your heart, search your mind, search your soul. What is it that you fear the most? Do you fear dying and not leaving a legacy for your children? The devil is a liar in the name of Jesus. Uh, do you fear 
that you're not man enough? Do you fear that you don't have what it takes to go to this war that everybody keeps talking about? The devil's a lie in the name of Jesus. He reminds us of our past. And how Jesus reminds us of our future because he paid the price for it. The thing that I fear the most has come upon me. What is it that you fear the most? What is that thing that's secretly hidden inside of you that better come out now before we get swept up? What are you saying, Maurice? What I'm saying is that Jesus wants you to know that he loves you. He wants you to know that you can trust him. He wants you to know that man will fail you, but he will never fail you. Job got cracked, but God elevated him to the next level. He went from knowing about God to having a superficial relationship with him to one of intimacy. Don't be afraid to let go of that crutch that is causing you not to have to trust in the love of God for your life. Let it go. Walk in spiritual position. Fight spiritually and let God do what God wills to do. But come into his presence. You have lost your first love. Don't forget your first love. Embrace your first love. Jesus Christ was your first love. He is your first love. He is first and foremost. It is God, then us, and then our families. We must always, always know that order of things. John 15, 13. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the Father told me. In the name of Jesus, my brothers, my brothers, my brothers, search your hearts, your minds, your souls. What is that thing that you fear the most that is stopping you from trusting in God? trusting that your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ loves you and that he calls you friend. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Until next time.